As we explore the universe's depths and uncover strange phenomena, we tend to relate theories to these discoveries, whether solved or unsolved. One such theory is about the universe and its formation. Several theories tend to linger on for decades even when they remain unsolved, and scientists always go over them to see if they can resolve mysteries about the universe. However, that has proved hard to achieve with the ever-changing dynamics of the universe. This is why scientists recently did some research, and their results led to the question, is the universe fractal? What could this mean have scientists discovered an opposite universe? Join us as we explore the incredible suspect, is the universe fractal? When you examine the structures that form in the universe, a lot of things we see on large scales also show up at more minor scales. These dark matter halos forming around the biggest bound structures appear similar to those created around Milky Way-sized galaxies, including the tiny substructure clusters within smaller galaxies and intergalactic space itself. On the huge scales in the universe, gravitation is the only force that matters. Under many situations, if you wait long enough, the gravitational collapse will bring about the same structures, but there will be a difference. The difference is they will be scaled up or down based on the system's size, and when you zoom in far enough, you'll eventually come across a particular structure that depicts the initial pattern you noticed on a larger scale. When this phenomenon is reviewed mathematically, it is regarded as the concept of a fractal. If the same pattern it keeps showing up at smaller and smaller scales, they are then analyzed mathematically and checked to see if they have the same statistical features as the more significant structures. If they do, it's fractal-like. Studying this phenomenon puts us at a crossroad now as we have to ask again, is the universe itself a fractal? The answer to this strange discovery seems yes, quite, but not entirely. Here's the science that explains it. Mathematically speaking, most of us are used to real numbers, numbers that can be conveyed in a decimal format, even if that decimal is endless and even if it never repeats. But there are other numbers that mathematically exist than just the actual ones. For example, there are complex numbers. Complex numbers consist of a genuine part but also an imaginary aspect, an actual number multiplied by i designated as the square root of minus 1. They include real numbers but take us beyond the restrictions of working with actual numbers alone. The most famous fractal ever recognized is the Mandelbrot set demonstrated in the complex plane where the x-axis is accurate and the y-axis is imaginary. The way the Mandelbrot set works is that you will think about every possible complex number, n, and then you examine the following sequence. Each new term is the preceding term squared, including n. If this sequence doesn't separate, diverging to either negative or positive infinity, then your value of n is a part of the Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set is done by describing the border between what's actually in the set and what's outside of it, with color coding depicting how far something is from being part of the set. Brighter colors are closer to being in it, as several designs are complex and self-repeating. When you see a small area with identical properties to the entire set, you call those regions self-similar. But suppose something has almost the same properties as the more extensive set, but with subtle differences. In that case, it exhibits quasi-self-similarity, but if the small region has truly similar properties to a larger region, it exhibits true self-similarity. In the Mandelbrot set, you can observe several areas that depict both quasi-self-similarity, which is more common. You can also observe true self-similarity, which is less common but still exists. We've mathematically illustrated this on scales covering hundreds of orders of magnitude, which is more significant than the physical scales that take us from the minor subatomic distances to the entire observable universe. From a mathematical point of view, it is evident that if the same rules and conditions apply at all scales, then depending on what those rules are, you would probably end up with a self-similar structure to the universe. This is where what shows on large scales also appears on small scales. It also became a question of specific interest in the late 20th century when we discovered two facts in collaboration about the cosmos, and these facts are as follows. The universe appears to comprise a massive amount of unseen invisible mass, which we presently understand as dark matter. Also, the overall geometrical curve of the universe is consistent with being flat, denoting that if you gather all the energy forms available in the universe, they are equivalent to the crucial density which decides the expansion rate. 
In astrophysics, physics, and cosmology, we understand that we can't efficiently simulate the entire universe to arbitrary precision. What we can do, however, is to make some clear assumptions and then act the universe to the best of our knowledge under that same set of assumptions. One of the more exciting things we began to do was process simulations of dark matter in the universe on various scales. Surprisingly, they all showed similar results. When you begin with a universe evenly full of dark matter, the same gravitational physics is constantly evident. No matter how uniform you make it, tiny imperfections will always be present. A tiny attractive or repulsive force on a subatomic particle, an atom or molecule that isn't allocated well, or a quantum jitter. And as soon as your system isn't even any longer, and total uniformity is unstable under the laws of gravity, the overdense regions will partially draw more matter than the neighboring regions. On the other hand, the underdefined areas will partially give their matter up to the surrounding regions. If you start with a single overdense cluster and allow it to grow long enough, you will have a massive dark matter halo, diffuse, spheroidal, and with its highest density in the center. An exception aspect is that even if you hastily differ your assumptions, you might still get the same density profile, getting thicker at a particular rate until a specific turnover radius, then getting thicker slowly until you arrive at the center. The idea of a comprehensive profile for dark matter halos is one of the most intriguing postulations in all of the self-similarity in cosmology. However, suppose we want to be more accurate. In that case, all we have to do is go beyond an isolated single system and instead replicate what's going on in a more practical scenario. Dark matter in a universe that's both stretching and filled with a variety of initial previous over-densities and under-densities. This, after all, is compatible with what we know and observe about the universe. If we make assumptions, we may reasonably presume something as close to the universe as possible. To find more facts, we run our cosmological simulations and find the following. We create an exceptional cosmic web where small scales fall first. As soon as gravity can send its powerful signal from one overdense area to the neighboring matter, the bigger scales fall later with smaller scale structures superimposed on it. Over time, larger scales would do the same, giving rise to an utterly self-similar universe. At this point, you'll see mini halos inside regular halos, which are also inside giant halos, all connected by filaments. If given enough time and suitable properties, even those filaments will produce their own halos, while an even grander web forms on bigger scales. At the barest minimum, that's how it would work if we lived in what's known as an Einstein de Sitter universe. The only thing making up the universe is matter, and we have an adequate matter to achieve the critical density, where the number of stuff exactly equals the previous expansion rate. In this play model of the universe, the infinite range gravitational force grows outward at the speed of light, which is equivalent to the speed of gravity, and there's no restriction to how big or small a scale can get. As a result, you will still create the same structures. But our universe differs from this scenario in three essential ways. To start with, we don't just have one type of matter, but two, dark and normal matter. While dark matter acts in this self-similar fashion, Ordinary matter is limited, it collides, creates bound structures, heats up, and even sets off nuclear fusion. Once you reach the tiny scales on which this occurs, self-similarity stops. The response interactions between normal matter and dark matter will change the density profiles of the halos in ways that would not be easy to decode. This fact still stays as an open area in dark matter research to date. Secondly, matter is united by radiation, an essential component of the universe. Because radiation has an energy that depends on its wavelength, it was more significant in the early universe. When the universe stretches, it gets less thick. The number of particles, ordinary matter, dark matter, and photons stays the same while the volume increases. But as the universe stretches, the radiation's wavelengths also redshifts, becoming lower in energy. So radiation was more important early on and got less critical as time passed. This postulates that for the first few hundred thousand years of the universe, specifically in the first 10,000, the matter over densities had difficulties growing as the radiation worked to wash them out effectively. There's a lower limit to the scales at which the universe is self-similar even in early times. 
your most minor scale structures will have at least 100,000 solar masses in them, which is estimated to be the masses of globular clusters and the smallest known dwarf galaxies. Aside from that, the only structures found are formed from messy collisions and interactivity between several typical matter-based structures. Another thing to consider is that our universe is also made of dark energy to a great extent, which controls the energy content of the universe today. If the universe kept stretching while gravitating and the expansion itself wasn't speeding up, there would be no upper restrictions to how massive these cosmically self-similar structures could be. But because dark energy exists, it basically sets an upper limit to the structure's size in the universe, approximately a few billion light years across. That might sound huge, but in an observable universe that stretches for 46 billion light years in all directions, even a structure that was 10 billion light years in all three dimensions would contain only 1% of the universe's volume. We simply don't have structures that are big and never will. Putting all of this together helps us understand an actual but perhaps absurd fact about the universe. On both the most minor and most significant cosmic scales, the universe is not fractal-like in any way and only the intermediate scales can show fractal-like behavior. Regardless, this area itself is a rich field of study. Scientists have been researching to calculate the fractal dimension of the universe for the past three decades now trying to find out whether it can be well outlined by one simple fractal parameter or whether multiple ones are needed. The close-by universe is not a suitable area to evaluate this, as dark energy has already reared its head for the past 6 billion years. But when we examine objects at a redshift of 2 or greater, we're looking back to a period when dark energy was unimportant the perfect laboratory for studying just what type of self-similar compositions the universe had. And with a new generation of space-based and ground-based observatories coming online in the next few years, we'll eventually get the comparison between theory and observation that we've always wanted to find out. However, the universe isn't a true fractal, but even in the realms where it's only roughly a fractal, there are still some captivating cosmic lessons just waiting to be learned. Let us know your thoughts in the comments.